The first person or those of you who are doing your best to move conversation along. The students in Julia St. Martin's 10th grade English language arts class are using a fishbowl protocol today. Your five minutes begins now. Their goal? Cite specific evidence from informational text to support their reasoning. In class, students have been reading Fahrenheit 451 along with a collection of informational articles focused on literacy. In the fishbowl, students are asked to discuss specific themes common to both the novel and the articles. We were really honing in or focusing on two guiding questions, why read and what is a world without books? I expect for us to be really smart and articulate about using this expert text, New York City Disconnected Youth Literacy Initiative. I'm also hoping that today you could use Fahrenheit 451 to really push us to have a smart conversation about why read, what is a world without books. We should have the following people in the inner circle. Tiffany, Dimitri. We use the fishbowl protocol today to really allow students both in the inner circle and outer circle to feel accountable for the conversation and discussion. Outer circle, here's what I need you to be really smart about today. I want you to track on your sticky notes the ideas that your peers use that show evidence from a text to move their logic. Okay, so um, with the first guiding question, I connected that to the article about the characteristics of urban schools because it told me that students are less likely to read and do homework and more likely to watch TV and they also have lower test scores. I kind of took that to why read because if we don't read then we won't have the knowledge that we need to to go out in the world and do other things with it so then like some like how in the um in the text how they had to go get your GED, GED so so Sydney you're doing a great job but I want to again re reiterate that I really want to see you guys making um, smart uh, conversation around a specific text. I want to make sure we know the title of the article and just frame it for us so that we're all on the same page. I took an example from the streets to the libraries um, and it said We've already spent uh, a good two to three class lessons with this text. It was really time to show their understanding of the text and really see a connection to our guiding questions. All right, outer circle. So you are responding, you are building, you are also holding folks accountable for their use of, our, of expert text to move their ideas. Anissa. Every person that talked, they tried to refer to their text that we got in class and connected to the guiding questions. Olivia? Um, something that people could work on is trying to put in the vocabulary words. Yes. So, round two. Uh, I need when I pick informational text for kids, I'm thinking about two things, relevance and complexity. One of the informational texts that kids use today uh, was a pretty complex text. New York City disconnected you. Kids were really pushed to use data, numbers, and percentage to really rationalize and prove their argument. Middle school or high school, you begin I also chose uh, a less complex text so that all kids could participate and feel smart about the dialogue that kids were having today. In the article, Ray Bradbury, A, a Warning to Future Generations, he talks about um, how the world stopped asking questions because they're engrossed in these television shows and books. Books can take you to new places that you never knew existed and open up new ideas. What I was most impressed with in our students was their ability to support their ideas with a great sound body of evidence. The only reason why people thought books were bad was because the fireman was telling them, oh, there's nothing And good. kids were also moving themselves towards using events from the novel to support their ideas as well. Well, everybody that spoke had great expert test connections. They um, knew what they were talking about. They didn't just, like, read it and say this connects to this. They actually showed proof. Olivia automatically jumped in and connected it to the novel very well. And I also want to give a shout out to Tadra because I think she did a great job in switching the question and also bagging it up with good evidence. Inner circle, begin. So the I connected why read and what is a word without books to the expert that came in Ms. Pfeiffer, the librarian. And she was talking about how... Another interesting thing that happened is kids were using uh, notes that they gathered from an expert who came to our class. I think without the use of their expert notes, kids couldn't really sound and be as smart around issues of censorship that are presented in the novel. Outer circle? Everybody in the whole circle talked and everybody contributed something. I felt like you could use the power word censorship because you were, that's what you were talking about. I feel like this group did the best out of all three of us because I saw the power words being used 
and everyone talked and participated, and it actually flowed like a real conversation. There wasn't like a pause where no one talked. Great. So we're going to now uh, break into debrief circle. What were some takeaways for the importance of using evidence to move our conversation? It's important to have evidence from different texts and novels because it lets people know like you know what you're talking about, you searched up what you're talking about, and like you really care about it. It also helped us connect back to the guiding questions so we can explain what we read. I think our class did really well today with um, looking at the expert text and using it in the conversation. I also want to say I like the feedback that people in the outside circle gave because it gave groups after the one that already gone something to have in mind of what they should improve on or do a little better. So Excellent. That was really good. Great job. So just one quick reminder on homework because I do have time. Tonight's homework you're going to finish reading Fahrenheit 451 book one. You have a quiz tomorrow.